Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, uh, totally both of us overdressed. So it's like 70 something degrees outside. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. And so and we're going to pretend like it's our yeah. little Indian summer. It is as Indian. They call and this it. is actually what Indian summer is like. And I think we've had two. Is that racist? No. <laughs> We've had two bouts of it, I think. We had a we had a spurt a couple weeks ago, and then now we're doing it again. It's going to be like every day this week warmer to where I think on Friday or Saturday it might be in the upper 70s. Well, I'm just going to say thank you. And, uh, <laughs> I'm happy about it. Consider that I have to go uh, probably start doing some leaf gathering well, it, and leaf cleaning. This is so. the first year, knock on wood, that I feel like I'm ahead of the game. Usually it's the night before it's going to freeze. I'm moving plants around. <laughs> and I've been, I'm like whittling down to, I think there might only be one more plant outdoor, like everything. I, I, I feel like I'm, more a, outdoors. I've, I've, I'm where I should be. And then now it's in the 70s. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. It's a nice time of year. It is gorgeous outside. If yeah. you're watching this on Facebook, please uh, get outside get today. Outside get outside today today every sure. day this week. Yes. Um, uh, so, yeah. so, life in New Hampshire, I was at uh, Lily Tang Williams's oh, how uh, was that? kickoff yesterday of Fulcino's yeah. Vineyard yeah. in Hollis. Hollis. Yep. I'd never been there oh. before. Really nice little yeah, location. Nice. Yeah. Um, it was one of those moments where, honestly, I was like, I kind of wish I still drank, you know, because it's, Cause it's got that, yeah, wine it's all... and, you know, definitely, and stood in line waiting to get drinks and get up to the front, yeah. and I'm like, oh, well, I'm the big drinker, and keep them coming, but can I have, you know, water Some with water. bubbles in? Uh, the guy enjoyed that. Good turnout. I mean, the yeah. whole bottom space was full. Um, She's showed... going to be a candidate to watch. I really so, do think. So, so you know, I blogged about it this morning, and, and I think what's important for folks to understand back home, first of all, she's running congressionally, CD2, so she's up against... Uh, Custer, I Custer. think. Custer. Um, Presuming Custer's the nominee. And, um, <laughs> you know, the there Democrats. was a, there was, I actually looked early this morning, I think there were six or seven people in the Republican primary for that position. Last time. Oh, Last I was going to say, yeah. And, um, and, you know, the bottom three of those got one or two percent each. But Lily and the top two, so she came third with 25 percent. Yep. And the Which top was pretty vote good taker for only got first time. 31. So right. that's a really small spread. So I'm really happy to see that she's out early. Yep, I agree. People should donate. Her story is very compelling. She's a Chinese American. She is an American by choice is yep. how she frames it. I was like, oh, I'm going to steal that as an immigrant too. I like it. You know, she represents the American dream. Yes. And she, uh, you know, she has the story of, hey, you know what? The, the things you hear about communism, actually not so great, yeah. right? And so she really has that personal experience of growing up under Mao. So I'm excited. I yeah. think it's great that she's out early. Uh, if that sounds appealing to anyone, you know, of course, go look at her website, lilytangwilliams.com, and make up your own mind. And if it looks good, help, help her out in some way for her race. That was my Tuesday. There you go. How was your week? Oh, I don't really remember. What have I done? I, don't I know, know we have right to know tomorrow night. That's oh, there's a, a house session tomorrow. I might go up yeah. to Concord tomorrow morning. It's funny. I'm oblivious sometimes, but I think I might just go up. I'll, I, I usually go up and help the NHLA um, distribute the gold standard, so I might go do that. But I think I might also just go up for the morning just to... Um, so the one I heard today is, uh, so there's a biomass... Yes, that's, I think, the Burner, big one. Burner, let's just call it that, up near Berlin. So mm. we'll just go with BBBs, yep. right? And I guess that has been subsidized by taxpayers yes. to the tune of tens of millions of bucks over the yes. years. And um, they are saying, hey, we actually have to stop doing this. Right. And it was vetoed, if I remember correctly. Yeah, well, that, by that, I presume it was because that's what they're mostly Sununu, voting on tomorrow right? is, is vetoes. So that's sort of interesting yeah. because that's him siding with I, I bad don't know. business. I don't like, know. Anyway, so that that I know is happening up there. I'm not sure what else they're looking at, but... I am I sure that whatever it is, is probably not in I, any of our um, best interests. I think there's a handful of veto overrides that they can choose to take up. I mean, they can just choose to leave them. Um, but there is also, I believe, that there is the possibility that anything that was laid on the table could get pulled off the table. 
which is interesting because I think the Democrats are down a couple extra people right now. Um, they also, anything that was retained, if the committee took action and exact it, there's things. So there are things, uh, some of that stuff I don't know yet. So I it's kind of interesting. Like, yeah. you know, I know how a bill works, yeah. like OTP and I ATL know how the vetoes and... all work. And because um, it only takes, it takes both bodies to override, I believe. It must. It's funny. I don't know. Isn't also, it funny? I just like, it all goes away and then it all comes right back. So so funny because, uh, in fact, I, I did an interview with Red State uh, blog a couple of days hmm. ago on some of the bills that are coming up this session uh, to do with independence. And I had done an interview last week with another, uh, with a Chicago talk radio. And, you know, when you think you know things and you're just kind of yeah. talking. So a lot of the independent stuff is still new. So I don't have, you know, like the Free State Project yeah. or Liberty or that right. kind of stuff I can talk about till the cows come home. But some of this is new to me. And I, I explained how a constitutional amendment worked. And, you know, and I said, and it, it, it has to pass with 67% uh, in the House, at, no, 60% in the House and Senate and the legislature, and then it's 67% of the voters. And then afterwards, I was like, man, I hope I, I, hope I got that right. right. I always get confused on the things that are two thirds and, and the things that are three fifths. And, 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 and yeah, so there's a lot of that. So, so I was like, eh. and then I was like, and eh, we'll trump it. If I was wrong, I'm wrong, whatever. Yeah. And mo but then the PR firm was that they clipped just that part and like sent it out to everyone. Oh, and then know, I like, was like, oh, I crap, hope it's right. I hope it's right, yeah. right? So this morning I was like, uh, did you, you look it up? Well, before the red state one, I was like, hey, babe, while I'm showering and putting on <laughs> lipstick, can you like double check my numbers? And it was right. So, oh, uh, you know, anything that would have to be a constitutional amendment in New Hampshire, which we did with the privacy stuff. We did stuff. do that with the privacy stuff. I mean, when it's something that... Um, Basically, it, people understand. Right. Well, that's, I think, the biggest thing is when... The, the privacy one was really, really simple. The language wasn't simple. complicated. Right. It, it clearly said what it meant. And I think that's a problem that always happens with le with legislative efforts is, you know... Well, you try to make it too complicated. I was just talking. I went to the you get AF the lawyers involved, AFP and they make had, it all um, worse. AFP That's Foundation did a whole thing last night um, about housing, and to be honest, most of it was the same old thing. You know, whatever. Um, one of the things it was interesting because I was torn, and I think we've had this conversation before. I do believe that people have the right to do. You know, it is your property. There are property rights at hand, but then they have to also look at like, yeah, but your property rights impact the property rights of your neighbor too. So they're talking about removing all like different. Some of the panelists were saying, you know, you remove all the restrictions that all the zoning, and other people were like, no, 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 we didn't say get rid of all zoning, but you can tweak your zoning. And I started thinking about like. Um, so what do you do? How do you, like, how do you make it work? Because if I buy my property and it's the rule is you have to have five acres, which I think is onerous, but whatever. But if I buy my property, that's because I presume that my neighbor's new house is also going to need five acres and so on. But then when you want to change it, you don't go from five acres to a half an acre. You have to do it incrementally or else people get freaked out by it and justifiably so. So then I started thinking of really thinking about it, like how would you actually do that? So I said, well, but maybe you could change it to say, now we're gonna allow four acres, right? And then I started doing the math and I'm like, that's 80%. I'm like, okay, so what if you said, you can now build at 80% of the size of your neighbor up to no more than five acres, you know, like the, no more than a five acre. So, <laughs> so I was like, she's already made the rules this long that well, no, no one can I started, understand. I, started, I was like, no, what like, are we doing math think now? About it. So if I've got a five acre lot, if the norm in that town is five acres and you say 80%, that's four acres. So now people next to those five acre ones will build, four, can build four acre plots, right? But then it would kind of go out. Now the people next to the four acre could do 3.2 acres. And I'm like, and then the, it, the people with the five acres are still protected, but you are allowing more growth and less 
it, there's well, got to be a way. I mean, that's sort of interesting, too, because that would actually push the smaller parcels farther from the city centers, which well, could be kind of you know interesting. I mean? So, and then, of course, I'm saying, and then I had a conversation with um, Representative Dan McGuire, and he said, I said, yeah, I would never have voted, on, and we had a conversation about this, for the fourplex. Like, they were, he goes, I just don't understand. Why didn't they just do duplex? Like, duplex would have might have passed because but they went right like uh, let's go right in for four units and people so, are like no I'm so, good. so i actually think part of that is because people don't understand how to negotiate anymore well, that's what I mean. so so i'm kind of like you know how people will say you should you should uh place your anchors right okay. so let's say let's say we want uh less of the federal government in our lives okay. and one anchor might be let's secede that seems right. like that's a over far there anchor, right. right which will drag things this way but let's do it with numbers let's say we're doing a salary negotiation mm -hmm. i'm willing to pay 120,000 right. and uh, you ask for a hundred thousand. Right now, if I go back to you and I say, "Okay, let's split the difference," I'm not going to tell you we're going to split the difference. But if I come back at one ten, you still know you it. have a sense, right? But if if you ask for a hundred thousand and I come back with a hundred and one thousand, right? You're like now that. you've got an information point that probably tells you my but window is, is smaller, right? right? So there are all these tricks you yeah. can do. So with the duplex and the fourplex, some genius was Said, probably let's just like, go let's for ask what? for four because they'll give us two. And then everyone and forgot just, to just ask right. for the two. It's just funny. So anyways, that was that. <laughs> um, so I did want to, the one thing that we totally, look, if you look, we have no notes. This is half, how, half the time how we're talking. <laughs> but I thought this was, was interesting <laughs> and I knew this would generate enough conversation. Um, Secretary of State David Scanlon put out a... Um, I don't want to say press release, but a statement. statement. And I thought I read it. It's short. It's not very long. It's three short paragraphs. Um, and I just thought it was interesting because this is things that people should think about and digest and wonder what that means. He says, the decision of President Biden to shun the voters of New Hampshire in the first in the nation presidential primary is not unexpected, Ooh. but disappointing. Despite all the rhetoric about diversity in the presidential nominating process, this issue is really about who determines the eventual nominee, the national political party or the voters. New Hampshire remains the one place where any, an emphasis on any, any United States citizen who is qualified to run for president can attempt to make it happen. Ballot access is extremely easy, and a candidate does not need name high neck name recognition or wealth to run a campaign here. For over 100 years, New Hampshire has represented the purest form of democracy in the presidential nominating process, and we will fight to protect it. And I thought about it, and I was like, that really is telling. Who is pulling the strings? Is it the party? Or is it the voters? Now... On the Republican side, math will tell me that Trump will more than likely be the Republican um, nominee out of New Hampshire. Whether that continues oh. across the country, I don't know. But I mean, there's just don't doesn't seem to be anybody close enough to change that. But we're still going to vote on it. We're still going to go in and we're going to say, but I want this guy and I want this guy. And if the math comes out this way, then that's what we do. The Democrats have just said, you don't even need to vote. We got it. Don't well, worry about it. Basically, they said is New Hampshire, you don't count. Right? And it, uh, they went even and, further. And they wanted the Democratic legislators to change the law well, about the New Hampshire primary to move us so we weren't first in the nation. And you can debate all you want. I have friends that hate the first in the nation process. I, I personally don't have any problem with it. I think it does bring tourism dollars, not like it used to, but it does bring money in because those candidates have to travel here and eat here and sleep here. And they're not staff. if they're Biden, they don't. No, then they the don't Democrats, even have to campaign. Right, the right? Democrat, right? The Democrats, does he even know he's running? He well, definitely he doesn't know he's not running in New Hampshire, right. as far as so I, I can tell. Right, think about it. Just, just the staff and their living quarters and their food and the money that that would contribute to the New Hampshire economy. The Democrat Party has said, screw you, we don't care about you. So what does that say about a party's 
overall, you know, like people would like you to believe that it's the Republicans that are making shady deals behind the scenes and running things and being this, you know, the schemers. When all I see here in New Hampshire is a bunch of people trying to talk to other, talk to voters. Um, you see it on the local level. I mean, I see all sorts of stuff about Republican candidates out knocking doors. Have you seen anything bubble through Facebook with a picture of, say, Maxine Mosley knocking on doors in Ward 6 to try to change things? No. So I honestly haven't. Uh, I've met all the Republicans. Like, uh, people right. knock on my door all the time. And right. um, I've had, you know, Norm actually, is yeah. the, like, he's knocked on my door twice. I mean, maybe he just wants to come say no, hi but now. I'm just saying, but, that, you, the, uh, the, what does that say about the quality of, uh, well, who I is think, controlling I things? Think what it says is, while the Democrats represent that they're of and by the people, they're really not. It's a bigger, way bigger machine that, behind yes. the Democrats yes. than anything that you'll see on the Republican yes. side. And that's just a reality. The machine on the Democrat side is a well-oiled uh well, gr palm you know, greasing even, machine. I, 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 I don't even remember what the specifics were, to be honest, because it doesn't matter. Um, there was some protest someplace in the last couple weeks. And you and I probably know this. The average person driving down the street doesn't know it. The same people, and it happens on both sides, but the same people that are out there so with their handmade sign about climate change are the same people. It's like this pool of activists just would, and they're not issue activists, they're Democrat they're activists. They're party. They are party activists. activists. So then and they, they actually get paid by well, the party. So I think there, that's important You know, to at the next well. protest, you've got, you know, like it's the teachers union people holding the, the abortion signs and it's the abortion people holding the climate signs. And it was on something... Somebody must have posted on Facebook or it was in the news or something where somebody asked somebody holding a handmade sign, because that's a gimmick, let's make it look organic, we'll, we'll hand you a handmade sign so it looks like you're here on your own. And they said, well, I don't understand, what, what does your sign mean? And the person had to look at what the sign was because they don't even know what they're protesting. They're just there because they're supposed to be there. And that's, that's... That's it's not uh, misleading a little. Yeah. It's, I mean, you see it on both sides. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Republicans honestly, will support Republican issues. I had to, I, I, I thought, you know, sometimes I find things in my diaries or in my notes somewhere and I'm like, oh, that's clever. And I found one the other day and I was like, oh, don't forget this. So I wrote it up on the kitchen whiteboard and it was actually the word democracy. Right. Okay. Like the democracy. To make a where mockery it's like of they're democracy. They're making uh, like, like. Everyone, yeah, it's just right. Oh, the well, that's a, that is, is a perfect example of what we're discussing, though. That is what it is. The Democrats are saying, "We, you've got this illusion of okay. your voice mattering. It's just an illusion. We're just going to make." Th I mean, and Dan had a good point. We were talking about it this morning, but and he said, what? "He goes, you know, after Mondale lost back in the '70s in the presidential primary or the presidential Here in election, New Hampshire, where someone cried because of it." Um, <laughs> but he lost the general election, and the Democrats decided at after that to create their super delegates. Right. Well, which all is those super delegates really did was say, "We're going to let you have an opinion." But if your opinion doesn't match what we really want your opinion to be, we're just going to override it. And and for folks who are like, yeah, what are you guys talking about? That is honestly what they did to Bernie. Now, look, Bernie, Bernie is a card-carrying totally. socialist. There is no way he didn't I don't win. support him. He is, and talk about democracy. Like, go actually look at all these people who just want to spread the wealth. Yep. They all got pretty rich yeah. telling you yeah. some stories. How many, how many properties do you think but Bernie owns? they, three... Uh, uh, they they did him in. Yeah. The DNC did him yeah, in. Yeah, because Hillary the was the nominee. He was just a bump in the road to making Hillary the nominee. And that is unfortunate. Now, well, but I we also know that there were, I mean, there's, uh, you see, the problem is, I think we're overloaded with information at mm -hmm. this stage because basically... The, the truth is out there. I mean, I remember the outrage from a lot of my friends who actually were Bernie yep. supporters. Yes, lo and behold, you can actually like 
have entirely different views from your friends. It's okay. Um, and, you know, th it came out and then the Podesta papers came out and like all this information came out. We know how corrupt all these people are. We know where the bodies are buried, where the money is, the Clinton Foundation, like all it's, of that. It's just so the, the Bidens, right? Like, right? didn't they just come out with another, like, uh, some bribe but, that but they it's can like, actually not show? Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Look and, over and it's here. All documentable, but nothing is happening no. or changing or anything. It is simply what, in the moment, you can have well, someone perceive to be the truth in that second so that you can be diverted. So so that they can continue to and, get and, rich. And as much as, you know, I don't want to believe that this is the case. So then you look at whether you like Trump or not, right? Whether you want to support him and whatever. More than likely, he's the nominee on the Republican side to be the next president. He's a former president. And the courts have basically said, you have to not talk during the election. You can't talk about a lot of things. And I'm like... But you see, but there is, I remember when I, 10, 15 years ago, when I started seeing these gag orders yeah, being what put on mean? public cases, and I was like, where is this stuff coming from? There is so much nonsense in our yep. courts. Yep. I mean, let's talk about how rotten DC is, but the justice, injustice system, equally bad. Everything has gotten so ridiculous. I was like, how do we even solve the problem? And you have to go back to basics. What one of the basics is the definition of a word. If we're going to have a right. conversation, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. That sounds really intelligent and cogent until you realize because we live in a digital online world, they can change the definition of a word real time like they did during COVID with words like vaccine and anti-vaxxer and all of that stuff. So then the question becomes, how do we even solve this problem? I think it's by just returning to literal meat space. Like I actually think, you know, all of us who, who at least in my case, moved here to... Um, to build community. Right. I think there's going to be this vast well, return back to like just real I do, socializing. I do think that there is, is yes, I do think there is a, um, and I think COVID is, has propelled that faster. Like I do think that there was a trajectory. We went through the trajectory where people became more isolated before COVID. Like they just focused on their own little life. People didn't know their neighbors. And then during COVID, I think people started reaching out to their neighbors in different ways. And then now it seems, I mean, I feel like it's more, like there is more people and more neighborhood things than there was before COVID. I, I mean, I hope so, because I actually think that is partly how we yeah. heal the world. You know, you look at the nastiness online, although I don't miss X or Twitter, I can't lie. Um, <laughs> You look at that nastiness and you're like, oh, but you know what? Real people don't actually behave like no. that. At, well, some do. Some, oh, some definitely do. Um, but you shouldn't. You know, right. I was thinking on the drive over here, I was like, this mantra, my mom and grandma always used to say it to me, but it was like, just because you can do doesn't something mean doesn't mean you should, right. right? And I was like, we need to get back to all these platitudes and all these like, uh, things we know, right? right? Like, it's almost like people are pretending like they don't know how they're supposed to behave. Well, I'm wondering, yeah. And I think that might be because of the polarization, the digital uh, media, social media addiction. Yep. You know, it's actually, I don't know if you saw in today's paper, but the AG of New Hampshire, if they could get on my right to know memo, we'd appreciate that. But they actually sued I, Meta oh, and yeah. um, and the social media platforms uh, in a class action suit that I guess a bunch of states are getting into now, where they're saying uh, you... So uh, software companies, app companies are targeting our children right, and, and you have designed these products to be exceptionally addictive and uh, it's having a really negative impact on the youth 
of the world. And You'd... I think all those things are true. Now, do I think the government should be suing them? No. Do I think the parents should be parenting and not giving their kids devices? Yeah. Uh, maybe watch Social Dilemma and listen to the people who designed right. these things and said, oh, we don't give them to our children. <laughs> huh. Well, that's what that's the same thing that they were talking about in the housing thing. There are all these people who want to reduce um, the, the requirements in your, your community, yes. not in the community they live in, in your yes. community. There should be, com you know, density housing. In your community. Mm -hmm. So, eh, no. Yeah. And that's part of the problem, which is why I always get back to property rights. In the end, if our goal is to make things as fair as possible, that is actually the formula. Yep. Because that's the one that just says, that's how it works. Yep. It's yours and you can do with it what you want. And if you want to not live next to the pig farm, then you need to be in a area that has a covenant with its neighbors that says, in this area, these are the things that we all agree to. You can do it with contract rights. It's not that hard. It's not that confusing. It's just our mindset is so who, what, what, what is the boss? What is the authoritarian? Well, I, I what think, is this other person going to tell we've me just I can gotten or to, can't do? We've gotten accustomed over time. It started a certain way. And then over time, the government has started filling in those, those answers. And now people have become dependent on the government to have the answers. And like you said, there's nothing to stop a neighborhood from agreeing to any set of rules. I mean, there, that happens in condo associations. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be the evil that you hear about with um, property associations, but... But again, that one is voluntary. Right. If you don't want an HOA or a nasty condo lady telling you what to do, don't buy the condo. Right. Again, you know, it's we can do I this know. with property rights, with contract rights, and with some common sense. Um, on the lighter side, if on Sunday um, you're looking for some place for your kids to do some trick-or-treating without having to be out um, on Halloween night, so maybe you have smaller children or, you know, you'd like to do something with them in the daytime, um, We Heart West is hosting a trunk or treat at the St. Mary's parking lot on the west side. Obviously, We Heart West, west side. Um, that is from 2 to 4 this coming Sunday. Um, a lot of a lot of people will be giving out candy there. So um, yeah, I was shocked. I, I actually went and volunteered there last year, yeah. and there were a lot of yeah. people. You know, free candy, yeah. popular idea. So Imagine come that. on <laughs> out and bring the kids in costume and all that good stuff, and meet some of your neighbors. Um, that's all we've got. If you have any questions, suggestions, um, gripes, whatever you got, recipes, I don't care what you send me. <laughs> um, you can email them to manchtalk manchtalk at gmail.com. That's all we have for this week. Enjoy the weather. Get out every afternoon and take a walk because this isn't going to last forever. And um, it's good for you. And it is good for you. Bye, guys. Bye.